City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 16th of May, 2017. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. The council public meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. And the red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding built and continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Members, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <laughs> Members, welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Members, I'll take you to item four on your agenda, which is confirmation of minutes from previous meetings. My, my mistake, I'm racing ahead already. Apologies and leave of absence, which is item three. Members, we have a leave of absence from um, Councillor Slama, and we have an apology from Councillor Clarehan. Members, confirmation of minutes, which is item four, which is uh, to confirm minutes from two meetings, one held on the 26th of April 2017 and another held on the 27th of April 2017. I've got a mover in Councillor Martin. Can I have a seconder, please, members? Councillor Vershaw, thank you. Members, any debate about those minutes? Councillor Martin, you're summing up. Members, I'll put that for you to adopt. Those in favour of adopting minutes from both meetings, those against, we will carry meeting those minutes from the meetings on the 26th and the 27th of April. Thank you, members. Members, we have one deputation request this evening, which is item five in your agenda. Uh, we have a deputation request which I've approved from uh, Mr Stuart Duckworth regarding the uh, Alpine Winter Village. Mr Duckworth, welcome. Uh, please join us. Uh, we'll afford you a total of five minutes and the members may then elect to ask you some questions. Welcome to Town Hall. Good evening, Lord Mayor and elected members. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for letting me uh, speak to you tonight. Um, tonight I'd like to speak to you about Alpine Winter Village. Alpine Winter Village, for those who don't know, launched in last year um, and was an extremely successful activation in Times Parade Grounds, which attracted the best part of 150,000 people to the banks of the River Torrens. Uh, with only four weeks to plan the event, we were extremely proud of what we put together. Um, it was an activation which the Social Creative, which I'm a director of, put together in conjunction with Renewal SA. What I'd like to speak to you about tonight is why and how we'd like to move the event, Alpine Winter Village, to Victoria Square. What, what's different about this event and why we think it'll be an excellent addition to the centre of the city in what is considered one of the more quieter months in Adelaide's calendar. Alpine Winter Village is called Alpine Winter Village for the fact that it is truly a village. It's not a nice rink and it's not just one element, it's a village, a village of a whole bunch of things. What's different about our plans for this year? A whole lot. This year what we have planned, if all things are considered, is lots of community engagement. If there's anything we've learned over the four and a half years of successful activations in Adelaide, it's about engaging with the wider community and collaboration. It goes a long way with a whole bunch of people. And so the difference of this year's event by comparison to last year's event or any other events which may be planned for that time is community engagement. What we have planned is community engagement with over 12 different community groups, varying from Ice Hockey SA, doing demonstrations on the ice, Broom Ball Association of South Australia, or Silver Blades Figure Skating, all with relation to the ice, which will be on a double the size ice rink by comparison to last year. Not to mention the toboggan slide, which we also have planned, which is a 30 metre long toboggan slide for kids, as well as a toddler rink, which is just in essence for the children who maybe missed out last year due to the overwhelming demand. 
Aside from the ice and the snow, um, being centred around school holidays, we have a kids area activation plan for the whole month, or the three weeks rather, of the activation plans. The kids area is called Enchanted Forest and it will be programming there daily, um, all day from 11am 11 11 onwards. Um, anything from face painting to winter petting zoo uh, to nature play um, and everything else in between. This will also be an area for umbrella winter sounds which is uh, an activation organised by Music Estate, who we're looking to work in collaboration with, which is all about live music in venues. Um, but because live music in venues doesn't happen throughout the day, uh, most often, uh, they'll be looking to program a whole bunch of kids' activation during the day, which is all centred around kids' programming of live music. In addition to that, we're also looking to work with the Hutt Street Centre to do a winter appeal. Um, obviously winter is a tough month for those who are doing it tough and we think it's a great opportunity to work with an organisation such as that to give back to the community. Uh, and so not only will we have a giant Christmas tree installation where members of the public can give back, but the Hutt Street Centre will also be volunteering to help children with other activities centred around Christmas in July theme. Um, in addition to yard bomb installations um, done by a whole bunch of community groups, we're also looking to have a winter cinema presenting a whole bunch of winter movies based around a Christmas theme, which is a whole other activity program for the entire month with nightly screenings. Not to mention, as I mentioned before, um, the uh, umbrella music programming extending beyond that of the kids' program during the day to also the live acoustic showcasings of those same artists who are performing in other venues. We think it's a really important activation with a hub centred in the centre of the city to be supporting other venues, such as where these umbrella artists are performing. So we plan to have a stage, which means they can showcase their performances advertising where they're playing at other venues and also incorporate that within what we're doing. And we have the full support of Umbrella SA in doing so. Why I think this event would be great for Victoria Square is it fits well within the Victoria Square guidelines, which is quite fairly put forward by the Council. Uh, we've worked closely with administration to ensure this is so. Uh, we have listened to feedback and activations we've done previously in Victoria Square, and we certainly are well aware of those. Um, for example, our fence line, the proposed fence line rather, would be very sympathetic to the surrounds, very similar to Tasting Australia, using lower fencing um, for any areas which aren't restricted to backup house, um, and ensuring that there is clear visibility through the site at all times. Uh, Operating hours would also be daily from 9.30 in the morning, um, which means that the square wouldn't be impeded from anyone using it at all times. Um, and being, a, if it, being that it is a family friendly activation during school holidays, it's important that we can have access during daily. We wouldn't be blocking any footpaths. We also wouldn't be using any of the uh, reconciliation plaza. And so therefore, no traffic management needed. Um, stakeholder support, we have engaged with the Adelaide Central Markets who um, are fully supportive pending that we don't close uh, Reconciliation Plaza. The Hilton have also been engaged and they're only concerned with noise but they fully support everything I've just detailed and think it's a great activation and welcome out on its doorstep. Um, same goes with Bridges Street Traders Association. What I'm asking of the Council is to look in favourably of a South Australian company looking to do a South Australian event with South Australian traders and just give us the opportunity to actually use our space for a great activation which we think will bring activation and vibrancy into the heart of our city when we need it the most. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr Duckworth. Uh, members noting we'll be debating this item uh, later. Do we have any questions or clarification which you'd like to ask Mr Duckworth? Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. Um, I, last year, uh, the event was staged in the parade grounds near Pioneer Gardens in association with Renewal SA. Was that a business arrangement? It was. It was a tender as an EOI process, which we were successful with last year. Um, and so the business arrangement, we did not receive any funds which contributed to the operations of the event. Uh, however, Renewal SA were responsible for the tender for operating of the ice rink. Um, so Renew and I say we're responsible for the ice rink and therefore organised and coordinated the ice rink and we uh, facilitated and curated the um, external surroundings, albeit Alpine Winter Village, and that's the concept we created. So th uh, they made money out of the w winter ice rink? That is correct. They funded and therefore generated the revenue from the ice rink itself. Lots? Uh, it is my belief that, yes, it was quite a lucrative arrangement. A million? Uh, I don't think it was a million, but... Um, a lot? It was a lot. It was a lot. Okay. Um, uh, are you proposing that this endeavour in Victoria Square is, is also with Renewal SA? No, this will not be with Renewal SA. Uh, I'm not sure what the plans were, but we did apply for a tender for the same activation this year. However, at the same time, we were unaware of whether the Renewal tender would be going forward when the Council multi-year event licences were due. The multi-year event licences, which of course were due in January, was prior to the tender coming out. Um, so we were unsure as to whether the application or the tender would actually be approached 
process which we'd be able to apply for when this multi-year ban licence was due, and uh, that's what we'd be looking to seek for this Alpine Winter Village ongoing. So is the event application, the tender for the riverbank still on the footing or not? Uh, it's, I, it's my, I'm led to believe that yes it is, but I'm not sure, and um, we're not part of that process anymore, so plans with renewal is um, in the dark about. Councillor Martin, do you have any further questions? No, I don't. Well, thank, thank you. you. Councillor Abia. Um, thank you for your deputation. Uh, just a quick question in relation to obviously competing interests, et cetera, in the city. Do you believe that around that time of the year, is it possible for two or three events or operators of a similar style to be able to sustain and attract people to the city and at the same time be able to leverage uh, their success moving forward without having one cause lost to the other? Or vice versa? Wholeheartedly, yes, I do believe that. If you asked me this time last year, I would have doubted that. But based on the success of the activation last year, which quite honestly took us all by surprise with regards to 150,000 people coming through and the ice rink itself selling out for the last two weeks of the activation, I wholeheartedly think and agree that there also would put forward that there's a clear appetite in South Australia for activation outside of Mad March. And whilst I did think I was dubious at first about how willing it would be in the middle of winter, I think last year is a clear demonstration of how much desire there is. And the fact that we were overrun last year with um, sheer volume of people and one major complaint was the fact that there was too many people, we tend to believe that there is a clear appetite for more activation. And if you look at any other city in the, um, in, in the world, let alone in Australia, um, winter activations of this nature help activate a city during the times where it's quietest the most. And I think having something like this in Victoria Square would be a great example of um, appeasing a lot of the traders in that area of what is normally a quieter time of year. And I think um, it's a clear example, as we've seen over the years with Mad March and the festival season, of how much uh, multiple activations with multiple operators can activate and bring vibrancy to a city. So I would strongly advocate that that would be a great way forward and this is a clear example of how that could happen. Councillor Abia. Just one last question for me. Um, and just finally, if you had to, um, in a percentage, describe um, the type of target market you are attracting to your event, um, what do you think you are focusing on? Is it sort of families, children, uh, you know, uh, night activation? Where, where is mainly your focus uh, in your planning uh, when it comes to your events or the proposed event that you're putting in the city? The planning is an increase on what we had last year, or increased attention on what we had last year, which was 70% families. And so the fact that the dates of the activation are purely based on private and public school holidays being a three week period, as public, private school is a week earlier than public, the whole attention in the target market is families. Of course, we'd like to welcome all walks of life. And so if you don't have children, it doesn't mean you're not excluded. So you are excluded. Of course, you're welcome. But um, the main activation is daytime. That's why it's open from 9.30 in the morning. And if last year's event is anything to go by, our busiest times were from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the middle of the day. Thank you, Councillor Abia. Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Stuart, um, for our Mr. earlier presentation. Um, the uh, uh, recent uh, 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 food event in the square had low open fencing, which enabled views into the uh, into the square. The, the last um, um, World Croquet Club function have very high, and other events have had high fencing that have not enabled any visibility into the square. What, what sort of fencing in what position would you be envisaging for this event? Uh, we'll be presenting, uh, or proposing rather, uh, a mixture, but definitely a, a large inclusion of lower fencing, especially around the entrance or the whole, uh, sorry, the middle section of the southern area, which would be our entry point, um, and any other area which is in back of house. And so uh, to put a percentage on it, I'd probably say 50-50 by comparison to larger fence to smaller fence, but certainly a very different arrangement to that of Royal Croquet Club, for example. And, um, and only using that of the southern end, which would mean that we can condense those back of, our, back of house requirements and ensure that visibility within the square is kept at all times. That's the southern end. Just the southern end, yes, sorry to clarify that. We are only looking to use the southern end and not impede or block any footpaths or um, central roadway. Right, okay. And would you be looking to have that fencing right at the edge of the benchman, like where the lawn meets the benchman? Uh, in some sections, um, where, um, for example, on the uh, eastern side of the southern end, where the vehicle access is, or the, the only vehicle access is, we would need that um, just to allow for vehicle access at different times. Um, but no, we wouldn't be looking to go to the footpath uh, in all other areas, and probably so, would actually definitely not. So there might be opportunity to have footpath form and then 
and light trends? Absolutely, I welcome that for sure. I'd, I'd, I'd put forward that the east side, that would be tricky. Um, definitely footpath can remain open, um, but uh, that would be needed for vehicle access, as I said, but every other footpath we would welcome um, some, some space for the lawn. And just a final quickly question, um, uh, how would you feel about having a um, uh, percentage of takings fee rather than a ground lease fee on this approach? I don't know if that's entirely appropriate to this debate, Councillor Wilkinson, but it's not consistent with our policy, so I respectfully say we'll move on. Uh, Councillor Corbell. Thank you. You might have mentioned this already. For your catering needs for the event, are you planning on missing any city businesses um, or food trucks? Uh, we've had 32 applications of South Australian businesses uh, for the food vendors. Uh, and forgive me, but I don't have the exact number of how many are based in the CBD, but I do know a large portion of those 32 are definitely based in the CBD. Only one of those, from my recollection, is a food truck who'd be looking to actually not, she, beg your pardon, would actually be not looking to use the food truck itself, but come inside and use the stall. Um, but I believe the majority that we'd be looking to see, which would be 12 in total on site, uh, would be all CBD based businesses. And also, if there's damage done to uh, the grass, is that all going to be done and fixed up in your expense? Of course, as with any event we've done on uh, council land, we're always liable for the full extent of the radiation. We would actually be looking to use um, the Fringe Club or the Adelaide Fringe decking, well, for those who are familiar, uh, who did the Fringe Club to protect the grass at all times, and that's been part of our planning process with administration. But of course, uh, acknowledgement of any damage done to the square um, or the grass itself would be our liability. Members, in absence of any further questions, we will thank Mr Duckworth. Thank you very much. Members, item six on your agenda, most notably item 6.1, is to receive a note and for Lord Mayor to write a letter. So uh, you have a recommendation before you for 6.1 members. Can I look to you for a move, please? <coughs> Councillor Martin moved, seconded by Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Martin, would you like to speak to this matter? I'll look just ever so briefly, Lord Mayor, because uh, you weren't present when the discussion occurred. Uh, uh, the addition uh, asking the Lord Mayor to write to the Minister is related to uncertainty about the process uh, that has arisen. Since the process was first announced, uh, there was an undertaking from the Government uh, to engage in a master planning process and that has been deleted from the schedule and there seems to be some qualification to other things that were promised. <laughs> Uh, and it was the view of the meeting that you uh, did not attend that uh, the elected members would benefit from some clarification from uh, from the government. Thank you very much, Councillor Martin. <coughs> Councillor Wilkinson, you seconded. Do you wish to speak? Procedurally, as chair of that committee, should I be the, not be the mover of that? Oh, sorry. Recommendation from that committee? Sorry. Uh, it's not mandatory. Um, I took the first hand that I saw that it's not mandatory. Look, Mayor, I'm quite happy. I, 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 um, I forgot. Um, so Council, I'll take you as the mover. And I'll take Councillor Martin as the seconder. So, do you wish to make any comment, Councillor Wilkinson? Uh, no. Okay. Members to the floor. Councillor Wilkinson to sum up. Oh, sorry, Councillor Vershaw, comment? No, no. Voting. you're voting. Councillor Wilkinson, summing up. <laughs> Members to the floor, those in favour, those against, we carry item 6.1. Thank you very much, Members. Members, with regards to the next item, which is 7.1, I'm going to propose to you, Members, that we first address item 13.1.1 which is an item which is currently, uh, of course, related to your deliberations of item uh, 7.1. And I'm going to propose members that we first consider item 13.1.1, which I'd, means I'd need to look for your comfort in doing so. I would move this meeting into confidence. We would have the debate about 13.1.1. I'd then reopen this meeting into public and we will address item 7.1. Thank you very much, Councillor Aviar. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. So, members, uh, I would need to now procedurally move a confidential motion to exclude. That was it. Councillor Aviar just did that. Thank you very much. So, members, I look for your comfort, so you vote on that if you could, please. Those in favour? 
is the nature of the confidential? What's the confidential nature? You have to explain that every time, I understand. <clears throat> Certainly. So item 13.1, CEO, I might hand to you or your team should the need arise. <coughs> but the what we are uh, contemplating in item 13.1.1 is uh, commercial uh, notations with regards to electric vehicle charging stations in the city. <coughs> And that will inform you better, members, to make a, uh, a better decision, an appropriate decision with regards to item 7.1 in your agenda. That's why I'm doing it. So I've sought your comfort for that. Uh, do I have a vote for you, members, voting to move into confidence? If I could, please, those in favour? Those against? I'll move this meeting into confidence. For those in the gallery, I'm doing this temporarily. So I will reopen this meeting to the public as soon as which time we have debated and made a decision with regards to item 13.1.1. So everyone not central to the item in confidence 13.1.1, can I please ask you to temporarily leave the chamber? Thank you very much. In the meantime, members, I ask you to turn to your page 44 of your papers because this is what we will be discussing.
Members, thank you. We have resumed recording. We are now formally back in public. Thank you, Ed. Members, I will now take you back to your agenda, whereby I will now move you on to item 7. And we have a recommendation from 7.1. Councillor Antic, you have your hand up first. What would you like to do? Dear Lord Mayor, I'm going to move an alternative motion. You may do so. Councillor, could you read that out to your fellow members, please? I think it's all come as a very little surprise, Lord Mayor. But, um, I'm going to move that uh, Council, all, all five points are deleted, I think there are five, uh, and that Council maintains the current number of, uh, I call them EV charging stations within the City of Adelaide, but continues to engage with the private sector and report back to Council with any proposal from the private sector to invest private funds in EV charging stations in the City of Adelaide. I second seconder for your motion. Councillor Moran, the floor is yours, Councillor uh, Antic. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, it's no um, uh, bit of uh, due fortune that my favourite movie is Groundhog Day, uh, because um, uh, sometimes it feels as though it's Groundhog Day every week in this chamber. I open the agenda, I, I have a look through the agenda, I find an item which falls way outside the scope of the local government uh, responsibilities under the Act, attend the meeting, talk about it, uh, get accused of being an uh, environmental bandit and move on. Uh, that is not the case. Uh, just this week, Councillor Wilkinson and I attended down at, uh, as been said, down at Herman Street for some tree planting, magnificent exercise, small amount of money, big bang for buck. <coughs> Sandy's tree planting is useless, but not standing that long is very good. Uh, that's not true. That was very good. Anyway. So the point is, Lord Mayor, that um, there are many, many items on the uh, on our greening agenda which are very, very meritorious um, and. Uh, unfortunately, Lord Mayor, this is one I just simply don't understand. Uh, in fact, it does sometimes puzzle me that we are stepping into the realm of items which fall into the scope squarely of matters which should be taken up by the private sector. This is, this is certainly one of them. Um, we've been told that um, at this stage there are 300 electric vehicles, EV, standard electric vehicles in the city, that, uh, in, the city in the state, I should say, and we don't know how many of those are City of Adelaide. The state's numbers are as they are. And we're talking about putting in 40 um, EV charging stations, which I find extraordinary, um, particularly given that we are in the process of spending significant sums of our ratepayers' money to do that. Um, we, uh, we know that last year, in the order of 219 new electric vehicles were, uh, were bought. That's nationwide, Lord Mayor, Australia-wide. So, it is difficult to see how at this stage we can warrant 40 of these uh, vehicle charging stations going in. Um, they are going to, uh, clearly, they're going to take up some car parking spaces, they're going to go into our U parks. But at the end of the day, I, I wonder, Lord Mayor, whether or not we would be so keen to spend this money, whatever it may be, in the, in the long term, if this was our own money, um, and whether or not this would be a project which would be better left simply to the course of time to see whether or not this technology is truly adopted and if it is, then presumably, as is the normal case in these sorts of matters, the private sector would step in and fill the void and provide the uh, stations as it would with petrol stations or uh, coffee shops or whatever it may be. But for some reason it is that we sometimes in this chamber feel the need to cross the boundaries into, into areas which are not necessarily the best bang for buck in our spend. Uh, that would not include things like tree plantings, Etc. Etc. And this is a significant sum of money which could be put towards those things, which also fit with our strategic plan to be uh, uh, one of the or the first carbon neutral uh, city in the world. So, um, I sometimes, Lord Mayor, feels like stumbling onto the set of Nimble the musical. Um, and uh, and I I uh, 
chorus line, a chorus line of uh, uh, Nimbin the musical, Lord Mayor, uh, nothing but a chorus line of uh, spending and, uh, and financial irresponsibility sometimes. So uh, I would suggest that we pull the plug on this financial irresponsibility and uh, that we, uh, we simply take the opportunity to leave this to the market as it should be, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Antic. Councillor Rand, you seconded. Do you wish to speak? Members to the floor. <laughs> Do we have any debate members? Yeah. Councillor Moran, would you like to debate before I... Oh, Lord, I would just like to make a couple of comments, and Thank I know we've done it all in private, but, um, but Councillor Antic has spoken in public, so I just want to make a couple of comments. I mean, Councillor Antic talks about opening the agenda and finding something you know, that surprised me. What I thought when I opened the agenda was, here's something that's totally in line with our strategic plan. Here's something that we've already agreed to, and here we are actually delivering on a promise. Um, no surprises at all. It doesn't come, to, to come as any surprise to me that this is what we find in our agendas. This is exactly what I'm looking for, that we deliver on things. And we shouldn't balk every time we agree to it in principle, then as soon as we get to see it in, in practice, we balk at it because it all feels too scary. This is about us taking some leadership. Electric vehicles are coming. We are proposing to put in some infrastructure to support the vehicles that are already here and to encourage further use so that more people will go out and buy electric cars and drive them into our city. And just as Burnside puts in electric vehicle charging stations so that people who do have electric cars go and shop at Burnside, we want to put in electric vehicle charging stations so that people who do have electric cars will come and shop in the city. It's exactly what we should be doing. We should be supporting our city businesses by providing the infrastructure that will get their customers to come to them. And one of the great things about electric charging is it actually takes a little while. So people have to get out of their car, go and have a coffee, go and buy and do some shopping, park, leave their car there so that it's charging up. Beautiful, exactly what we want. That's why Burnside's got it. That's why Grand's got it down at Stanford. Grand's got it down. That's why. Small country towns are putting it in so that people will stop in their town, charge their cars and spend some money. My, my hometown has a little charging station there so that people will stop and keep and spend a couple of hours there walking down Hender Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she only me about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> so, you know, this, is, this to me is doing exactly what we ought to, ought to be doing. And again, as, as um, we pointed out on a previous occasion, this is very good bang for our buck. We are spending money, but we have a number of people who are co-investing with us. The Government of South Australia is putting in some money. $200,000 in fact. Mitsubishi Motors is putting in some money. SA Power Networks is putting in some money. Deputy Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor, can I caution you about information being shared currently? Back to topic, oh, please. Oh, pardon, Lord Mayor. Sorry, I didn't realise that was on there. <laughs> a number of people are putting in some, uh, are providing us with support for this. So this is uh, this is um, a, a contribution that that uh, is a shared contribution, and I think that's something to be celebrated. Thank you, Lord Thank you, members. Do I have any further debate? Councillor Aviad. Um, Lord Mayor, I've debated this in confidence, but just quickly, just to put on, uh, on on a public record, again, echo the sentiments of the Deputy Lord Mayor, and I foreshadow that if this motion was to fail, then I'd move the original motion. Uh, it's really important to note that this is in line with our strategic plan. I'm sure in the past, this council, there have been many debates around the purchase and the development, the building, the renting of infrastructure to do with car parks in the city because the cars were coming. And that proved to be a very successful venture for council, just like I am certain. This level of activity around small level of investment that will attract more vehicles to the city that are cleaner, leaner, uh, that will encourage people to buy more electric cars to be able to use in the city, knowing that there's infrastructure to support it. I mean, that is really important. Imagine having to buy a phone knowing you can't plug something in the wall to charge your phone if you go into a cafe or if people try to live on 5% battery on their phone. I mean, these are the things that most of the consumers out there start to look for solutions and add value to the purchase they're having. Now, we own the public infrastructure. It would be pretty hard for um, a private operator to come in and just buy a you know one square metre from council to set up infrastructure. I mean, in essence, that's what the issue is. Uh, Councillor Antics um, uh, 
uh, remarks as well. I mean, yes, potentially some of the petrol stations will end up having some of those, uh, you know, electric points. Yes, that, that might be something they may want to do, and people will need to leave their cars there for longer periods of time or take up the space, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But, but this is a, an add value service to our city. It will encourage the purchase of these vehicles because there are support mechanisms for people to be able to drive to town and use them. But most importantly, it does align with our strategic plan, and that's. Although you may not agree with it, um, Councillor Antic and some other councillors, we do have a consensus and a council decision on it. So we are obliged to keep bringing these style of projects in that deliver on those outcomes and those objectives. So I'd ask members to not vote for this motion and to support uh, my foreshadowing uh, of, the, um, of the current motion as recommended. Thank you, Councillor Abia. Uh, I'll go to Councillor Moran because you reserved your right earlier. Would you like to speak now, Councillor? And then I will go to Councillor Corbell and Councillor Milani. Look, uh, once again, as we debated in private, don't throw the strategic plan at us. Don't throw the green agenda at us. We all agree with that. We did sign off. But that doesn't mean, what if we came out and said, I want a thousand. I want one in every house. And that's supported by our strategic plan. And you, you horrible people don't want everyone, so you're against the strategic plan. We're not against strategic plan, we are, but we want to move forward sensibly. There is no demand at the moment. There are 300 cars spread across the state. First, when we asked for that information, hybrid cars were thrown in and completely... Uh, so uh, information isn't clear, but what is clear is there is a very small number of electric cars. Um, governments entering things like this is always ends in tears. The private sector does it a lot better. We argued something about a share customs system the other day and we all agreed, leave that to the private. They do it better. We haven't consulted on this. We consulted on our strategic plan. And of course, the answer to do you want to, if there are elect, lots of electric cars, do you want to have electric car stations? Of course we do. We didn't say that we would provide them, how many we'd provide, etc., etc. This is a cargo cult type of mentality. Build them and they will come. They won't. They might come, but it won't be because we've built some of these stations. Um, we should be, I think, uh, as some said, it's very difficult for the private to come in and negotiate spaces in the city. That's where we should be coming in. Do you want to set some um, set these up, Mitsubishi? Yes, we do. Well, here you are. We will give you two car parks. Remember, every one of these is a couple of car parking spaces too. That's where, and you would have my 100% support as a facilitator. Burnside Village, uh, I think that was used as an analogy. The Burnside Council doesn't pay for the electric things. The private business does. So that, I'm quite happy if Myers decides to put a couple at the back or David Jones, but it's not the business of council. Other cities don't do it and we shouldn't do it. This is money that is taken away from other initiatives. I think Councillor Milani said, is that the budget light that plants trees? It may not be, but it's, this is not the only initiative. There's other things we could bring back the um, money to help people put in um, solar electrical panels on their roofs. Um, to phase out wood-fired heaters. You're taking from one for a demand that we don't need to supply yet. We should be nimble and, and on our front foot speaking to all these people. When do you want it? When's the next group of cars coming in? Blah, blah, blah. Here's some parking spaces we can use. We can, in the meantime, I, I'm not saying put a couple in. I'm not saying put the two of the best in right outside the town hall if you want it. Most of the time there's a couple of, but that's central, that could do it. Councils don't, I think that was, a, that was Hassan, glad I that, but councils don't run petrol stations and this is a petrol station. At the moment we have 50% of coal-fired electricity, so that means we're not keep, only keeping our city clean, we're dirtying up somebody else's backyard. So don't put the green high moral ground at me. I didn't say the word green. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Corbell, followed by Councillor Milani. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, vehicle emissions are the main cause of air pollution, and this is our council seeking to address that by curbing the kind of transport and making it more accessible for electric vehicles to come into this city to charge up. It encourages people to come to our city. It encourages people to adopt clean technology to move about the city. This is part of what we are here to do as an elected body, as a council. We are a capital city council. We are here to make socially just and ecologically sustainable decisions for our community. It is within our strategic plan. It fits really well with what the federal government's agenda is under their Smart Cities plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. That's what this is addressing. We are giving due weight to the environmental and development management of our community. And we are providing a service to our ratepayers, our residents, and the people that are visiting our city, providing public services and facilities which are required. This is a future demand which we are generating. And we are showing leadership in this space as a city on a global scale, putting ourselves out there as a 21st century digitally technological city with infrastructure and services that are provided to our community um, at the forefront of green technology. It's in line with our carbon neutral city um, strategy and action plan. We're partnering together with state government. It ticks all of the boxes and it fits so well with our strategic plan. And I won't support Councillor Antique's motion. I'll support the original um, motion. Thank you, Councillor Corbell. Councillor Milani. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I will, I will support the foreshadowed motion because I think everyone just needs to breathe here for a little bit because what we are moving is to go to consultation. So the concerns that we have, and, and, and we're talking about 7.1 in this uh, agenda item, is about going to consultation. If that's what we are looking at. We are going to consultation on on the charging stations, the proposed fees and charges, we're going to go and ask the community in the market what they think of this. So that's what we do. We have a strategic plan, then we budget, then we have partnerships, and then we go to consultation to work out what it is exactly that this is going to look like. What's really interesting is we are looking at um, um, the, uh, the business case for the installation of the 40 charging points. What was interesting to discover is the economy of scale, whether you put in 10 or 40, the, the cost is around the same. So if we, it, it's not a matter really about how many, and I take up the uh, physical space as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, a question we need to answer as part of the consultation process. But um, in terms of budget lines, and we do have a specific budget line that is around addressing these types of issues, we do want to increase visitation. We do want to do our fair share to, to reduce carbon emissions. Um, so let's, and now we have to look at what is the model that we actually take and, and, and install and operate. So there's consultation about the locations, there's consultation about the charging fees, there's consultation about um, the, the U parks and the services that will be provided there. Let's go and ask those questions. Um, we have some, you know, um, good um, some, some potential partnerships, and uh, that that's a great thing. So now let's work out what this looks like. Um, use the budget line that is designed to deliver these outcomes, and um, tweak it as we need to as we get the feedback coming in. Thank you, Councillor Maloney. Before I hand back to Councillor Antic to sum up. Um, members, I don't wear Birkenstocks. I drive a car, which is probably older than what I am. Um, but I think that this project, and I'm not supportive of what's before us at the moment, I would be more supportive of the uh, original recommendation. The, this sits perfectly, members, in my view, uh, directly between our goals as being a smart city and a sustainable city. And this is a perfect outcome of both of those. In fact, I can't think of a better demonstrator project in terms of that. Not only is it a demonstration project, it's a very practical project. Like the Deputy Lord Mayor said, this is the type of infrastructure which attracts people to cities and actually puts dollars in the registers of our small businesses throughout the city. So I think it's both practical, I think it's good infrastructure and leadership for the City of Adelaide, and I think we should be uh, embracing the, uh, the original recommendation. Councillor Antic, the floor is yours to say. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, well, yes, that's quite right. I think uh, Councillor Moran sums it up. Pretty nicely, this is about uh, sensible spending and the role of the facilitator rather than the role of the, uh, 
Oh, of the uh, provider of these services. Um, I mean, I, I find it interesting um, that we've got this apparent business case set up for this project, yet, as far, to the best of my knowledge, there isn't a single um, other uh, petrol station or any, I mean, if, that, that would provide this service. I mean, you would think if there was such a demand for this, that at least some of the petrol stations would be saying, you know, we'll, we'll add that to our repertoire, you know. Um, it, it can't, this is not a business plan that fits into line with something like RU Parks. That makes money. This won't. This is going to cost us money. This is not sensible spending. Uh, this is nothing more than a smoke ball on the ground uh, of, of the diversionary tactics that the state government have used in order to tell us that everything's all right. We're going to be innovative and we're going to be all of that. This is going to spend our ratepayers' money for the purposes of doing that. Uh, and it, we, we haven't even addressed the issue of obsolescence. We, 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 are, we are simply going to end up in a situation, we all know it, where we're going to do this all again in three years. We're going to spend a whole heap more money. As Councillor Moran says quite rightly, the private sector does that better than us. You know, we shouldn't get into a business we don't know, we don't know and we aren't good at. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Um, the bang for our buck would be much better spent on other greening initiatives. There are many of us who have no issue with the concept of greening initiatives when they're done properly. And uh, this is nothing more than um, trendyism, I'm afraid. And sometimes we need to get over jumping at the, the last thing we saw on the internet before we got up uh, on a TED talk. So uh, I'm pleased to support this. Members, you have an alternate motion before you put forth by Councillor Antic. Those in favour? Those against? Division. Motion failed. Division call. Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise. Councillor Antic, Councillor Moran. <laughs> Councillor Abiad, you foreshadowed. The floor is yours. Yeah, look, Mayor, look, I move as um, as recommended, as printed at the moment, and I'll seek a seconder. You have a seconder with Councillor Corbell. The floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, just to note quickly, one of the things that baffles me about the lack of support for this, that Councillor Antic doesn't even want the community consulted on this issue. He's already made up his mind. This is a process of consultation. We're saying, as a council, we have a strategic plan that we've voted on, that we've consulted the community on, and it's come back saying, tick, we would like to see more sustainable solutions. So we've come up with sustainable solutions, and now we're going back to the community to say, hey, we've come up with this, what do you think? Um, and then that information will come back to council for a final decision. So if there isn't an appetite out there, I think it's important for the councillors that are not supporting this to actually spread the love within the community, have a chat to different community members, and get that feedback through council. Because if it means we need to change this as a result of the consultation process, then we'll do that. Uh, that's not the issue here. If uh, the community feels that we need to have less charging point, then we will do that. If the community feels we shouldn't spend the money on it, then we will do that. Uh, and I think it's really important that that's noted, that this is a consultation-based process. And in speaking to the motion, I think it's important that we send this out to our community. I do commend that the administration have done some significant work here in being able to amass the partnerships and take the leadership approach and bring in stakeholders into this. And let's see what the community thinks. Uh, I think that's what we need to do as a council. And uh, I commend the current motion to Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Councillor Corbell, you seconded it. We used to speak to it. You're reserving your right. Councillor Moran, I think you had your hand up. Yes, just a couple of questions. Um, so we're going out to consultation. Are, when are we buying these things that apparently have fantastic um, savings with scale? Savings I've never heard of. <coughs> Such vast. So when are we buying? So we come back and they want two. Have we still bought 40 because 40 costs the same as two? Peter, yeah, thanks. Through the Lord Mayor. So there's two separate components. There's the, the 30 off street and the 10 on street. Um, so the 10 on street is subject to the consultation process, uh, but the, uh, the 30 is it was subject to the tender uh, that, that had already gone out. And so that is uh, would be proceeded with uh, in the new financial year. So we've already got 30 and now yep. we're, we're talking about 10. Yep, so the 10, the 10 is, is uh, related but separate. Okay. Um, I would like to very detailed analysis. It's, it's very difficult, um, I'll debate now, very difficult halfway through a debate to have, well don't worry about the bottom line, don't worry about the budget. 40 is going to cost the same. There's huge um, savings in scale. I would like to see that. Of course, everybody knows there's savings in, uh, in quantity, 
but um, that, that to me is a very easy thing to say and I would like that really proven to me because I'd hate to think that that wasn't the case and it was used in, an, uh, in a debate when, uh, with more weight put on it by a councillor voting than it should have. Um, nobody, um, once again to Councillor Abiyad, once again to Councillor Abiyad, I think we've said this before, we all agree with the strategic plan, for God's sake. It's just how we proceed with it. To say that certain members aren't, about, aren't supporting the strategic plan is just, it's just wrong politics. It's, it's playing the man, not the ball. I agree with the strategic plan that we should become lean and mean and green and so forth, but I would rather wait put in a couple of these high speed ones and wait and see if there is then a demand for it. Wait and see if the private sector then then build some in the car parks. What if happens if we have them? Sandy gets his wish and charges a high electric amount. Suddenly we're in this bidding war with other people, the private sector. How low can we go? We have no idea. It's like when we used to run the dump. I mean, we're in an area that we don't know a lot about and we're rushing in and the debate is lining with, it is not a matter, I think, uh, uh, Councillor Martin said of ideologies, it is not a matter of ideologies. Yes, it it's a matter of, uh, it is not a matter of ideologies. I completely agree with electric cars. So it's easy to throw that and say, oh, you know, you're far right and we're far left, and blah, blah, blah. It is not a matter of ideologies. I totally support electric cars. Great in fact, I'm looking at, and I certainly support more greening in the city. The difference between putting these in and building quarter of a million dollar green walls is I object to the fact that could be hundreds and tens of hundreds of trees but instead sent on a silly green wall or somebody's garage. So no, it, it is absolutely not a matter of ideology. It's a matter of how you want your green dollar spent. And I think some of these glossy ones, we can go to the government, stand next to them and say, we put in these charging states, aren't we fantastic? Or we can do the boring stuff, like go around and meet the guys that are doing the electric cars and, and find, out, find out where they want them, get all that stuff. It's easy to throw public money at stuff and it's easy to take the accolades from that. But it's really bad politics, it's cheap politics and it's using the public purse to make you feel better. And I really object to it being called ideology and I really object to saying that we don't agree with the strategic plan. And I think that reflects really badly on the people saying it rather than the people hearing it. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, yes, I'd uh, like to move an amendment my um, ideology is that I support these green initiatives, but also that I don't think that we should be doing it um, uh, unduly at the ratepayers' expense. And um, uh, looking at the table, it's been put to me earlier that um, I should be moving an amendment to the effect that a range of fees go out to public consultation. So looking through the table there, um, my proposal was to have uh, Double to double the charges, but of course the charge for under an hour is nothing. Mm. If you double that, it's still nothing for under an hour's charge. Councillor, may I assist you? So, um, could you assist your fellow members by reading out what your proposed amendment is, and then I'll seek a seconder, and then we'll debate it. Just for may I comment, sis? Just from hearing Councillor Wilkinson earlier, I just think he's really keen on, and I'm happy to include it if the second is happy to approve that he would like to have a range of fees consulted on. So maybe I could read, read out that I've got a few options or something. Yeah. What I've written here is a range of charges from that proposed about half the normal cost of electricity to normal domestic electric charges up to full cost recovery for rate payers, payers over a 10 year period. So you've got that spectrum. And then you go to consultation with that full spectrum. Some people are right for the green thing but not thinking rate payers should put the bill bill. Others think we should be subsidising it 50%. Others think we should be charging what everyone pays. Okay, I'm rate. just going to assist our secretariat here, councillor, so we're, then I can seek a second of your debate. This is going to be, by the look of it, added to point four. Um, if you could just read that out to your fellow members, starting where the cursor is. Including a range of charges from that proposed, in brackets, about half the normal cost of electricity. 
to normal domestic electricity charges, up to full cost recovery for ratepayers over a 10 year period. Okay, just wait a moment for your debate. We'll just make sure that we capture that, then I'll seek a sec seconder and we can enter the debate. I'm having a second, but I thought the mover was actually happy to incorporate. Happy to incorporate it for second reason. No problems of <laughs> So we still haven't captured it correctly, Councillor Wilkinson. Yep. Can you just look at your screen, please, and just read out for the assistance of the Secretariat to make sure we've captured every word correctly? So from including a range of charges. From that proposed, about half of the cost, of, yes, to normal cost of electricity, domestic electricity charges. Okay, just <coughs> bear with us. Correct. Up to full cost recovery for ratepayers over a 10 year period. Okay, so we can. Life of the eye of the, Thank you. So we can treat this as an amendment, or Councillor Wilkinson, given that you're moving the amendment, if you're happy to work with your mover on the original motion, Councillor Abbey, we can adopt it into the original motion. What would you like to do? I'm happy. If the mover's happy to adopt that. Okay, mover, are you happy to adopt that? I'm happy to bring a range of charges, You are. Your seconder was Councillor Corbell, so Councillor Corbell is nodding. I'm getting general favour from the room on this. So thank you very much, Councillor Wilkinson. Would you like to speak to that matter any more? Yeah, no, I, I think uh, you can be uh, green and commercial <coughs> in one go. That's what I'm trying to achieve. Thank you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further debate on the floor? I don't, so I'm going to go back to Councillor Abiyad. <coughs> Councillor Corbell, you reserved your right, I recall. You're still reserving. I'm going to go back to Councillor Abiyad to sum up. I was going to talk about the strategic plan again, but oh. I'll just give it a bit of thought in the Members, I'll take this to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Motion carried. Item 7.1. Thank you, members. <laughs> members, I will take you straight to item 7.2. You have two recommendations to note. Do I have a mover, please, members? Moved by Councillor Martin. As printed, I presume, do I have a seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Abiyad. Councillor Martin, do you wish to discuss? No, Councillor Abiyad, do you wish to discuss members, questions, queries or debate? Councillor Martin, to sum up. <coughs> members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 7.2. Thank you, members. Members, item 7.3. Uh, we have a. Now, do I need a procedural motion first? I think what I will do, members, is that I'll ask for a procedural motion and then I will call for delegates for both the principal, sorry, nominees for the principal delegate, then I will call for uh, nominations for proxies. Members, for your information, we, have, we may have one or more proxies associated with this. Uh, engagement. There is no pecuniary interest involved, so you do not need to leave the chamber. So, members, can I have someone please move a procedural motion? Councillor Rabiad, thank you. Seconded by Councillor Corbell. No debate. Those in favour? Those against? We now have a procedural motion in place. I now call for nominees for the principal delegate. Councillor Rabiad's got his hand up first. I'd like to nominate Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, do you accept if nominated? Any further nominees? Council. Councillor Milani has registered interest. I'd like to nominate. No, I will withdraw, uh, Lord Mayor. I believe Councillor Martin's interested in this. You withdraw. Thank you, Councillor Milani. So, members, I don't have any further, so we'll deal with this, I think, in part. So, we'll now do the principal delegate role. We have one nomination, we have that acceptance. I'll put this before you to vote. Those in favour? Sorry, my mistake. Yes, I need someone to move that, please. That Councillor Martin, moved by Councillor Antic, seconded by Councillor Abiyad. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Congratulations, Councillor Martin. Now, members, proxies. There may be one proxy. There may be more than one proxy. That's I'm in your hands. Councillor Corbell. I would like to nominate Councillor Milani for the proxy. Councillor Milani, do you accept if nominated? You do. Thank you, Councillor Corbell. Do I have any further um, nominees for proxy? 
I don't. So can I have a mover please to adopt Councillor Antic, seconded by Councillor Martin. Those in favour? Those against, we carry. Congratulations, Councillor Milani. That concludes item 7.3. Thank you very much, members. Members, I take you to item eight, questions on notice. We have no questions on notice registered for this meeting. Questions without notice, do I have any? I don't, I will keep you moving, members. We go to motions on notice. The first of which is a motion on notice from Councillor Moran regarding the Sunshine Children's Crash Stones, page 33 of your papers. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, I move this printed that uh, we form an inquiry to whereabouts the stones from the Sunshine Children's Crash that were to be stored at the Cambitzers construction by the Cambitzers Construction Company as part of the agreement with them. Uh, I this, seek a seconder. I've got one. Councillor Antic. Councillor Moran, the floor is uh, was the first uh, purpose built crash in Australia for working women. Um, it was called the Sunshine Children's Crash. Um, when I was first on council, or sometime early on council, uh, application by the Count Pitzes Group to pull the building down, the historic building down, it was met with enormous public um, dis-ease and unhappiness. Um, many people came to the gallery to speak. Their mothers or grandmothers had been, in de had been children in the crash. Um, the council was really torn over to whether to give approval of this and what to do. It was a really contentious issue and in fact was the reason we got security guards in the council. Prior to that we just had the Lord Mayor's driver but it was felt the need, there was so much passion um, in the argument. And to appease the um, to appease the, the really public unhappiness with this very touching um, memorial to working women and uh, little children at the, at the time, the Cambitzers group kindly, we thought at the time, agreed to put into the agreement that they would number and store, I think it's called a portico front of the building, um, not the whole building of course, to be either reinstated in some form in their replacement building or perhaps used at some later date by council to honour these working women and their children. Uh, this was duly signed and agreed and uh, I for one, and I know Jane Arnold with Lord Mayor, firmly believed that this was a binding agreement. Um, some years later I moved a motion asking the administration to just check that they were indeed stored uh, somewhere and I received, we received the reply, yes, they're stored and numbered in the Cambitzer storage yards. Now while we had a bit of a joke, of a laugh because we weren't really sure where the Cambitzer storage yards were, um, we were um, comforted that they were indeed being looked after if, at some later stage. Now it seems that we're being um, ignored by the Cambitzer group when we have politely asked where they are. Um, I don't know what's happened. There's some suggestion that we looked after them for a while and then they went there. I have no knowledge of that. That certainly wasn't the agreement. But I don't think just because a decade went past that an agreement can just be ignored like that. And um, I would really like to for us to really put some, some effort into this. I, I feel that there has been little interest from, um, and I'm not putting any figures, from the administration in this. But this is an incredibly important thing. Well, I don't know. I mean, Megan, I don't like to say that, but I haven't had any replies from what I've already moved emotional along so I've <laughs> had nothing. Um, a letter to Mr. Cambitz is asking where there is, is really nothing, is it? Um, this was um, an incredibly divisive and important thing in its time. And I think just because I'm the only one that remembers it, and both, both Jana and Smith, isn't good enough. I would like the Lord Mayor and the CEO to really put their best efforts into this, not just a little letter that Mr Cambitzers can ignore. This is an important thing for the history of women and working women in our state. Thank you, Councillor Moran. You have a second to Councillor Antic. Thank you, Lord Mayor. All right. Members, do we have any debate? <laughs> Councillor Moran, to sum up. <laughs> uh, Councillor Corbell. Summed up. Summed up. Members, those in favour? Those against, we carry item 10.1. Members, item 10.2, um, Councillor Vershaw has left the meeting for another appointment and I've received no written advice with regards to 
uh, how this could be proxied to another member. So I will leave that item. We will address that item at our next meeting. Well, man, just to make it official, um, can we just uh, rest the item on the table or leave it on the table? Yes. I think that's important. We can just leave it. We can just leave it? Yes. Okay. Councillor Bershaw can just reintroduce that onto the agenda in the next meeting in two weeks' time. Councillor, thank you for making that offer. Uh, similarly, members, item 10.3, uh, Councillor Wilkinson was sitting in his chair some 10 minutes ago. Do we have any knowledge of the whereabouts of our councillor? No, sorry, not yet. Sorry, not yet. <laughs> All right, he may move it without notice later on the agenda if he has time. All right, well, members, I can't. I might, I might provide the councillor some leeway should he come back. I'm going to go to um, item 11 on your agendas. Uh, members, do we have any motions <coughs> without notice? We don't. So members, I take you to item 12, which is exclusions to the public. We have a number of matters to uh, contemplate in private members, of which 13.1.1 has already been contemplated and decided upon. So I'll need a mover to move the following items into public, into private, into confidence, into confidence please, members. Um, could I have a mover to move 13.1.2, Winter Events in the City, into confidence? Moved by Councillor Mulaney, seconded by Councillor Rubbiard. Those Question. in favour? Question. Certainly. Why does that need to be held in confidence, CEO? Through Lord Mayor, I understand there's a commercial aspect to this, so therefore it needs to be held in confidence. I, I don't. What is the question? That's what I'm trying to ask the time. It's not clear. I'll just take some advice on that. Just. Through Lord Mayor, um, we've actually. Um, recommended that this actually be um, taken in confidence in relation to the fact that uh, the scope of each of the bids are not public knowledge at this stage. They were part of an EOI process with Renault SA. I'm not sure of the release process they have in formally advising, as you heard through the deputation today. So from my perspective at the moment, I'm unsure as to the confidentiality, but we have um, erred on caution and kept this in confidence at this time. Can we deal with the Renewal SA in confidence and the other matter in public? <laughs> Uh, I'll move, uh, could I suggest something? Um, like all these things, um, there's a great deal of uh, public interest in what we're deciding tonight, and as we've asked ad nauseum that some of these reports to be written so that the council can debate what is needed in public. The CEO doesn't even know, it, is not really clear on what's confidential, so clearly there's not much. Um, I suggest that we defer this item. Um, and uh, to write a new report separating um, the uh, confidential items so that we're really clear because I don't think we should, I don't want to debate this in confidence because I think it is important that the public hear what, what our thought process is but at the same time I don't want to contravene confidentiality if there is any so um, if I have a second I'd move that we defer this to the next council meeting there's no rush Members, thank you Councillor Moran, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to answer the question, ensure that administration answers the question which Councillor Aviard asked. Uh, and we have Brett Carland, who's our legal yes. advisor, and I think Brett would be in a position to provide. But that's not, that's not good enough with all due respect, Lord Mayor. That's an important thing. I think we should have, you, should, you administration should go off and think about this rather than having a little parallel here and thinking why is it confidential on so, so I, I, me, um, members, in all fairness, uh, Councillor Aviad asked a question and the, I'm going to enable that question to be fully answered and then you can make a decision. So, administration? I think you have to accept a motion when I move. Yeah, but I'm still asking. <laughs> Through the Lord Mayor, we have taken legal advice on this matter. The subject of the discussions is likely to involve confidential, commercial confidence information concerning submissions that have been provided to Council on a commercial confidence basis. If discussions were to go in the public forum discussing commercial and confidence information, then that would prejudice potentially the proponents who supplied that information. Further, it could potentially put us in breach of confidence of 
our obligations and undertaken to the proponents who provided that information. Additionally, the report contains an attachment, which is legal professional privileged advice. Should that information be necessary to support the context of the discussions, then we may prejudice our position concerning the confidentiality and legal professional privilege of the legal advice. That's exactly what I'm saying, Lord Mayor. I ask that this be deferred so a report on this matter be brought to the next council meeting, clearly separating. Lord Mayor, with all respect, I still have the floor. Yes, you do. Councillor, um, the floor is yours. I would suggest, Lord does Mayor. That, does this satisfy your question? So, in, in, in the regard of asking the question, it seems that the two aspects can't be separated from this discussion. What I prefer we do is we still move in talking in support of a confidence motion, which you have a, a mover and a second before. I speak in support of going into confidence, and if council wishes while we're in confidence to defer this matter, we can, because I think it's important that we highlight some of the concerns we all have with some of the aspects of this report in confidence. And if council wishes to defer it in confidence, then we can do that. And potentially, Councillor Moran can move that we do that deferral in confidence if required. Well, defer something in confidence. Because I'd like to ask more questions that potentially could um, have an impact on the confidentiality well, issues. Because I think it's important to deal with today. It's on the agenda, Lord Mayor. I think I'd like to ask questions to do with it. So I'm happy to support it in confidence. Okay. So members, we're going to move this item into confidence. Do I have any further debate on that? Those in favour of moving item 13.1.2 into confidence, that's all we're doing at this stage, members. Those against? Okay, so that carries. I want division on the confidence. Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise. Councillor Malani, Councillor Abiad, the Deputy, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Corbell, and Councillor Antic. Carried in favour. Members, I'll now take you to, uh, could I please have a mover for item 13.1.3, which is a matter regarding lease Vodafone Rundle Street to move into confidence. Councillor Mullaney, seconded by Councillor Corbell. Any debate? Those in favour, members, I'll put that straight to the vote. Those against, that item is moved into confidence. <laughs> members, item 13.1.4, moved by Councillor Mullaney, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Any debate? I put this for your consideration. Those in favour? We move 13.1.4 into confidence. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, they are the three items which Lord we Mayor, made. Lord Mayor, I'm just Deputy pointing out that Councillor Wilkinson is back in the chamber and his motion was not in confidence. So do you, I'm just wondering if you wanted to do it. Can we not deal with it even though we've moved those into confidence? We can still... Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, I may provide Councillor Wilkinson with a latitude once I move this meeting back into public after contemplating these three uh, confidence items. I might then provide Councillor Wilkinson with the uh, latitude to debate his item from previous. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that to my attention. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you are not... Uh, um, uh, if your presence is not uh, central to the three matters which we're about to debate, can I kindly ask you to leave the chamber? Thank you for your presence.
Councillor Wilkinson. <laughs> members, do I have any debate? No. Councillor no. Wilkinson, you're summing up. Members to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Congratulations, Council. The quickest motion ever. <laughs> members, the time is 9.27 p.m. I formally declare... Thank you for your contribution, members. I formally declare the meeting closed. Thank you for your attendance, your participation. Thank you to administration. I formally declare the meeting closed. Thank <laughs> 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 